It's been 10 years since the release of Deadly Premonition, a game that was originally deemed as a lackluster survival horror experience that fell victim to its low budget and over ambition. However, it has since garnered a cult following. It earned this status thanks to its combination of Twin Peaks influence, laughably horrendous gameplay, and cerebral yet earnest narrative. Now, the Toy Box sequel, Deadly Premonition 2 A Blessing in Disguise, is releasing as a Nintendo Switch exclusive. Seriously, who saw that coming? Oh, ho, ho. looks like I finally earned myself a rival. I'll give it to you straight. Deadly Premonition 2 offers up a carnival of poor design decisions with things like mini games that could only be described as anti quality of life, as well as hokey and poorly mixed dialogue that blunders each sensitive topic it comes across. And lastly, the game-breaking bugs that defy reason. However, despite all of this, Deadly Premonition 2 kept me engaged with its outlandish and emotionally resonant plot. Look, Zack. We're about to encounter a new character. Deadly Premonition 2 A Blessing in Disguise has a campaign consisting of four chapters, all partially taking place in the year 2019. Following FBI agent Aaliyah Davis in Boston, Massachusetts, most of the gameplay in these sections is confined to a living room. Davis interrogates a man named Zack on the events that happened in the town of Lucare, Louisiana in the year of 2005. The game then switches to that exact place and time period, serving as a prequel to the first game while following its protagonist, FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Lucare, Louisiana serves its purpose as a recreation of the rural towns in the American South. While the first game drew inspiration from Twin Peaks by taking place in the Pacific Northwest, it seems Deadly Premonition 2 draws heavily from the first season of True Detective, which is a really great show that you should definitely watch. You can skip season two though. I instantly recognized in the intro of this game that it had the HBO crime show's fingerprints all over it. Francis York Morgan and his young assistant Patricia navigate the open world location of Lucare, attempting to unravel the vast conspiracy surrounding the murder of a young girl. The past and present storylines converge in a conclusion that goes brazenly off the rails while still offering potent moments with its sincere characters. Deadly Premonition 2, a blessing in disguise focuses on fleshing out each of the characters, pushing past their possible eccentricities to tell human stories. Francis York Morgan is the standout. It's a joy to listen to him rattle off facts on the films he has consumed, while also being captivated by his analytical and detailed detective work. However, there is a certain character whose implementation leaves a lot to be desired. While it's evident the writers were making an earnest attempt at a valuable representation, those efforts were undercut by some frustrating decisions. Despite this, I still ended up enjoying the journey and thought it was both suitably out of the left field and emotionally tangible. I don't know how long I've spent playing Deadly Premonition 2 because according to the in-game clock, it's been 113 hours, which definitely isn't right. But that aside, there were still quite a few hours the game didn't track since I suffered a handful of game-breaking bugs, many of which required me to reload multiple saves in order to push through to the end of the game. The bugs in this game range from wildly frustrating to hilarious. I encountered around half a dozen game-breaking issues in total. For example, one time I switched out of the menu and I wasn't even able to pull out York's gun. So then I had to reload a save, which took me back around 15 to 30 minutes. Then there were times where I would simply get stuck between a chair and a dresser and have to reload the save. So yeah, while the bugs do have some charm to them just like the first game, they were definitely more frustrating than charming. The open world brings its own share of frustration Frustrations. It runs pretty terribly, especially when playing in portable mode, making navigation between areas a chore even when using the much more efficient skateboard. I ultimately adjusted the skateboard's stats with charms that were made available to craft in the game, though it obviously didn't fix the frame rate or improve the draw distance. I highly suggest unlocking the fast travel locations, especially for those looking to stick with the main story. Throughout the game, you're able to play many games, and not one of them is properly implemented. For example, the bowling has awful mechanics and atrocious frame rate. 
And I don't think I stressed this enough. The frame rate is really rough all throughout the game, no matter what you're doing. Even with all the bugs and bad performance, Deadly Premonition 2's load screens are still really long and also suffer from frame rate drops. As I mentioned before, you're able to craft charms in order to better make your way through the game's combat, which is pretty darn repetitive. There are alligators, squirrels, dogs, and more that I either kung fu kicked with a three hit combo or shot with a tranquilizer gun, mainly to gather supplies for upgrades. Raids. There are other enemy types and bosses in the game, but a lot of them are largely uninteresting. Thanks to both the passive behavior of the enemies and the generous lock-on system, the third person over the shoulder shooting is nothing special and pretty simple. Deadly Premonition 2 A Blessing in Disguise is charmingly awful and will stand out as a morbid curiosity among the pantheon of Nintendo Switch exclusives. As a sequel, it stays true to the original by accidentally or intentionally inheriting its almost exact flaws. In certain aspects, it's better. In others, it's much worse. I found the combat to be more palatable, while the performance and glitches were difficult to stomach. The repeated ambition to swing for the fences with an open world experience still doesn't do these games any favors, but there's something admirable in a game that tries to do so much with so little, and still provides an entertainingly bizarre and twisty narrative that has to be seen to be believed. I recommend those who haven't played the first game to steer clear, as both the built-up fortitude and previous plotlines are necessary to properly navigate the dysfunctional mysteries of Lucare. As for the existing fanbase, you'll likely be satisfied with FBI agent Francis York Morgan's latest outing, as it adds another unintentionally terrible sequel to the canon. Or maybe it is intentional. I really don't know at this point. Thanks a lot for watching guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Have you played Deadly Premonition 2 yet? What do you think? Be sure to hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, that thumbs down if you didn't, and if you're feeling generous, hit that subscribe and maybe even that notifications bell. Trust me, you don't want to miss tomorrow's preview for an unreleased Switch game. Thanks a lot for watching, I'll talk to you guys later.